Well, good evening, everyone. It's great to have each and every one of you joining in to us for our, our Sunday night service. We're looking forward to what God's got in store. And I hope you, you've been, you're prayed up and you're ready and see what God and how God is going to speak to you. We're thankful that those are, are watching by Facebook Live and also we are able to do YouTube Live. So we're, we're multi-streaming uh, to, tonight. Uh, on Facebook and on YouTube, and we're thankful for each and every one of you that are there and you're watching. And my prayer is that God will use this time, will use these songs and use the message in the songs and then use the Word of God to speak to each and every one of us and speak to each and every one of you to the, to the most needful thing in your life. If you're lost and undone, tonight's a great night to be saved. If you're backslid, you've gone cold and indifferent on God or you don't care about church or the things of God, my prayer tonight is God will speak to you in a mighty way that draw you back under the fold and back into his house and back into following his leadership and guidance. I want to, as I said, thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. What a blessing we, we had this morning. What a great service, great song service, and I'm thankful for that and a great, uh, great message from the Lord, and I'm thankful that God come and spent some time with us and flowing from heart to heart. And breast to breast, as I said this morning, God transcends time and place and he can be here flowing from heart to heart and he can be at your place and at your neighbor's house exactly at the same time speaking to each and every one of us simultaneously. And I'm so thankful about that. I do want to ask and let, let some people know, Brother Jerry Fuller, who's a longtime friend of here, he was a former member, uh, had moved away, so he's a longtime friend. Brother Jerry was taken to the hospital in the wee hours of the morning last night. He's back at home now, but Brother Jerry was having trouble breathing and the doctor tested him for COVID-19 and thinks that he does have COVID-19. So he is isolated at home and they got his oxygen levels back up to a level that the doctor was comfortable in letting him go home. So I want you to pray for Brother Jerry Fuller. If you get an opportunity, I know Brother Jerry would love to hear from you. I spoke with him a few moments ago, and he told me to tell the church that he loves them and wants, wants, wants us to continue to pray for him. Also, pray for Sonny Johnston, who someone uh, gave out this morning, the Sonny Johnston family. Uh, at, at his passing and want you to pray for that family and all those not only him but all those that have lost a loved one this past week and during this difficult time there is strange and modified <laughs> ways that we're having to conduct a funeral nowadays and so you pray for that family and you pray for the touch of God upon their lives also it was mentioned this morning in brother Paul's uh, I guess testimony uh, about people being indirectly affected by the COVID-19 mentally, physically, and, and have stress and emotionally. And uh, I pray for them, and I, I hope you will too. And if you are one of those individuals that fall into the categories that you're feeling great pressure because of where we find ourselves in our society today, listen, I ask you to fall upon your knees and seek God's face and guidance, and God will help you. Now, I know that those that are suffering uh, se severely from depression, I know that you just can't pull yourself up by the bootstraps, as people sometimes tell you to do. Just get over it, pull yourself up, go on. But my prayer is God will help you in this time uh, so you can uh, seek the medical help that you need, or God can give you enough comfort that God can ease off some of that and you will find yourself rejoicing uh, in the Lord. Um, it was uh, brought to my attention this afternoon that uh, our governor has asked us tomorrow, April 27th, from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, any time during that time or the whole hour, if you have the opportunity and can, that he wants all the Georgians to pray uh, that the virus will be removed and that things will, that God will see fit to get everything back to normal. So that's from our Georgia governor, uh, Governor Kemp, and I greatly appreciate him and his leadership, and I appreciate him asking. Listen, it's, it, it's, sometimes it's a rarity you find a politician that will openly and publicly say, folks, we need to pray. And I want to thank Brother Kemp for the, the, knowing the need of praying. So tomorrow, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, Brother Kemp, uh, I called him Brother Kemp, but Governor Kemp, uh, 
uh, has asked us to pray, so we'll pray about that. Also, it was brought to my attention as well, uh, Dr. Ralph Sexton has asked uh, the church and asked different ones to pray coming up on May 15th. Uh, it's called Praying on the Mountain. And uh, you can go, they're looking for 100,000 plus on, on May 5th. I, said, I may have said May 15th, but I'm sorry, May 5th at 12 o'clock, Dr. Ralph Sexton is wanting people to, to pray. And he's wanting to make sure and he's wanting to record your name and record your church and whatever else there that he is looking for. You can go to ralphsextonministries.com and you need to sign up and you can sign up and then we'll, he's wanting 100,000 plus. But my friend, if, if you and I, the children of God, will pray, there'll be more than 100,000 praying uh, not only tomorrow but also on May 5th at 12 o'clock. This is a request from Dr. Ralph Sexton, and he's at ralphsextonministries.com. And the, and the scripture that uh, Dr. Ralph Sexton has for this time of praying on the mountain, it's Second Chronicles 7, 14. It says, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. That's what, he's, that's what he wants us to do is pray. And seek my face. Look toward God. Ask God for wisdom and guidance and understanding and ask God for help and humble themselves, I'm sorry, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Now, verse number 15 says, Mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. Not only here at Cochrane Ridge, but everywhere uh, the man of God stands, the word of God is proclaimed in this time of prayer. Tomorrow, God's ear will be a tent to where people are praying. And on May 5th, at, for this praying on the mountain, God's ears will be a tent under the prayer. So let us pray. Let us seek God's face and seek God's guidance. And let's look forward to what God's going to have in store tonight. And I'm going to surprise everybody tonight. We're going to be back in the book of Hosea, chapter number 10. Normally when I say that, when I say that I'm not, this is, I'm not through, then whatever, now, and I may uh, try to finish it up tonight, well, very rarely does that ever happen. And my brother-in-law said this morning, said, you've been in the ministry about 31 years. In the last 28 years, I've never heard you, <laughs> I've never heard you come back and, and finish up a message that you started uh, in a morning service. Uh, so, to surprise everybody, we're going to be back in Hosea, chapter number 10, verse number 12. I want you to get your Bibles, gather around the Word of God, turn the television off, turn the radio off, kick the dogs out of the house, send the kids, out, send the kids back in there with you around the Word of God, and let's focus on God tonight. Let's focus on the Word of God. I want you to like the Facebook page. I want you to... Not only like it, but comment and share it. Listen, I want to thank you for those that have been doing that over the last couple of services that we have asked and re requested you to do that. You've been fantastic, and I want to encourage you to keep on and, and encourage more people to share it. We don't know, I get, we don't know how many people that it's reaching. We don't know who's, who's uh, viewing it in the, manner of the, uh, in the manner if they're lost or saved, but I do know that it's reaching, the Word of God is reaching more people from the Cochran Ridge pulpit than it, than, than it has before in a single service. And I want you to continue to do that. I want, it, I want God to continue to bless it, but it can't happen without you helping us and sending it out to your friends that are on your Facebook page. And those that are on YouTube, if you would, please like our YouTube page. Uh, channel, Cochran Ridge Baptist Church, and, and then, of course, comment and whatever it is you do on YouTube. I don't go on there very much, but we certainly will going forward. So looking forward to that. Brother Jimmy, while we finish up, you come on up here and you pray for us tonight. We're thankful to have those back tonight. Sister Cindy Smith is going to be uh, bringing the message in song. She's going to be singing and looking forward to that, and I'm excited about that. And, of course, Brother Jamie and Dan are upstairs, and Brother Paul is here. And then Brother uh, Jimmy walked in a few moments ago. So, Brother Jimmy, if you would, come around. Lead us in this prayer, please. Thank you, brother. Well, it's time to be shining a light for the Lord uh, through these days. And uh, we all need to do our part, church, and uh, just uh, 
thank God for his many blessings, and uh, he sure is good to us. Looking forward to hearing Miss Cindy sing in just a moment. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you uh, in the uh, name we only, uh, only name we know how, God, and that's the precious name of Jesus, the name above all other names. Uh, Lord, we're just calling on you right now in the sweet name of Jesus. God, first, I just want to humble myself and ask you to forgive me of my sins and my transgressions, God, as we try to reach the throne room tonight. Oh, Lord, there's just a lot of needs, God, that Brother Jeff just mentioned. Uh, God, I can't uh, remember all of them and don't know all of them, but Lord, uh, we trust that you do because you're God and you know everything and uh, you're everywhere. And, and uh, Lord, you're certainly here tonight, God, and we just want to call on your name. Uh, all those with a need tonight, Lord, we just ask for a special touch. Uh, I pray for Brother Jerry Fuller right now, just a dear man of God. Uh, a brother Deacon from the church, Lord, I pray that you touch him as he's battling uh, the COVID-19, God. Lord, all those with a... Uh, who may be uh, uh, stressed or depressed or uh, who are just uh, affected by what's going on in society today, God. Lord, I pray, uh, Lord, in your name, God, that you touch them tonight. Uh, Lord, you help them, Lord. Uh, uh, Lord, you're the only, only uh, fix that, uh, uh, Lord, you're the only uh, uh, person, God, that can help us uh, uh, as, uh, as we get through the next couple of weeks. God, I'm just thankful. Uh, that uh, we, uh, we have a day of prayer tomorrow, God, Lord. I call on all my church family, God, Lord, to pray between 10 and 11, God, to reach the throne room. Uh, Lord, again, all those with a need tonight in the church, God, I pray that you touch them. Uh, Lord, where the death angels visited, God, Lord, I pray that you, that you just help those uh, who are hurting tonight, God. Uh, maybe it's somebody who just don't know where to turn to next, God. And Lord, I pray through Facebook, through through the YouTube channel, God. Lord, I pray that you just touch that individual who needs to be touched tonight. God, I pray for all of our churches uh, 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 tonight, God. And and uh, Lord, we're just going to dedicate this service to you right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for Miss Cindy, God. Lord, I pray that you that you give her peace, God. And Lord, I pray uh, that you just touch her like I know you will, God. Lord, I pray for Brother Jeff tonight. Uh, God, I pray for uh, all of our uh, all of our uh, all of our silver saints here at the church uh, who uh, who uh, may be uh, not feeling so good. They're ready to get back to church. God, Lord, I pray, God, that you just help encourage them. God, you help us as a church encourage one another. Lord, we just love you, God, and we're just going to call on your name again, once again, just to be in the service tonight. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother Jimmy. What an honor and what a blessing, Miss Cindy. If you would. Before I sing, I do, I want to use this opportunity to testify because it seems like forever since we've been able to be here to testify. I do want to thank the Lord for saving my soul. I want to thank him for the privilege of being in his house tonight. I want to thank him for the message that Brother Jeff brought this morning because, Brother Jeff, I don't ever want to be found in that part where it's a divided heart. I don't ever want to go through the motions of just coming in the church. I want to come in and I want to go out different when I do. And I pray that the Lord just touches everybody's heart through all this that we've been going through and that we'll all come back with a renewed spirit and a renewed heart and be on fire for the Lord. And when Brother Jeff asked me to sing, I've had about two weeks to pray about it. And I've just asked the Lord, I said, Lord, show me the songs that will just be an encouragement. They will minister. They will help somebody along the way to let them know that we're not alone in these times. And they talk about, you know, God's faithful. His promises are true. He's with us in the valleys and he's with us on the mountaintops. He's just with us all the time. So I pray these songs will be a blessing to you.
I just want to thank the Lord for the grace that he has bestowed upon me and my family. And I know that I've only made it by grace these past 30 days. Because y'all know, most of y'all know, our church of pain knows, the Lord called my mom home on March the 14th. And my mom's not here anymore. And she told me to always stay strong and to pray and keep going no matter what came my way. And I've picked up her motto of of pray and keep going. And I just just know it's by God's grace because if it wasn't for his grace, I wouldn't be standing here tonight. Oh, and I just want to thank him for his grace that he's bestowed upon us and for keeping us safe this far. remember that no matter what you're going through the Lord knows all about you he knows every step you take every move you make and you know that can go right along with what brother Jeff said this morning about the way we come in in and out of churches Lord already knows how we coming in and out what's in our heart 
And just remember, God knows everything. He sees everything. And that's just what we have to remember. And so we need to be sure, even when we're in our deepest, darkest nights like we've been in, we still need to let our light shine, Paul. We still need to let people know we trust in the Lord and he's going to bring us through. Cindy. Amen. I appreciate that. Amen. Right quickly before we get into the Word of God in Hosea chapter number 10, right quickly want to do mention and I want to welcome, welcome home as we always say and it won't be too much longer till we'll, we'll be able to hear that, those words in person and I'll be able to see you and to give you those words in person and I am so thankful that we do have a home and the home is our Father's house and <clears throat> to, uh, next week, May 3rd and then May, uh, I think it's May 3rd yeah, May 3rd and I think May 10th uh, we're going to still have our Facebook Live and our YouTube Live 
And then on May 17th, uh, Lord willing, if everything works out right, and we spoke about it a couple of times, if everything works out right and uh, that goes well, we'll have a modified uh, church services uh, on May 17th all the way through, uh, through June 21st. And those services will be at 9.30, 12.30, and 6 o'clock. And as we mentioned, they will be a time that we will ask you to sign up, ask you to give us two, to give us at least two time preferences that you would like to come. And let me encourage you, church family and friends of Cochrane Ridge Baptist Church, you want to come to church, please. Uh, we would love for you to come, love for you to be here more than one time on a Sunday. So if you can, you can come, put down multiple times your, <clears throat> your servantship. Example leader will be calling and we'll be giving you, uh, asking you about those times in, here in the next couple of weeks, and we'll be getting all that going and more coming up. And then, Lord willing, on June 28th, we will have our first, what I'm going to call our first unrestricted uh, church meeting again, uh, like, like, our, like a normal, Lord willing, like a normal meeting on June the 28th. So we've got dates. We've got things to look forward to. We've got things to be excited about. We have dates, we have times that we can be, be praying about. And my prayer is that God will use this time of prayer here tomorrow for the state of Georgia. And then on May 5th, God will use that nationwide. And we will see, the, we'll see this timetable rapidly move up. And we'll, we'll find ourselves worshiping again in an unrestricted manner long before June 28th. But may God bless you. Let us uh, make sure that we pray. We're going to go into the Word of God, Hosea chapter number 10 and verse number 12. Hosea chapter number 10, verse number 12, as we were reading this morning, we read verse number 1. It talks about that there is an empty vine. And then verse number 2 talks about that the heart is divided. And Sister Cindy spoke about that, about our hearts being divided. And when our hearts divided, it, we see the progression. When our hearts get divided, that it's not too long between verse number 2 and verse number 12. We see that the hearts, the, the, the hearts trans, transist and it goes from uh, a heart being divided to a heart that has fallow ground, which is hard, untillable, uh, something that's unuseful, something that cannot be used. And so tonight, with those thoughts in mind, I want to look at the, not only the fallow ground, the fallow ground is just an imagery uh, that, that God provided to the children of Israel at Ephraim to show them how, what they truly were in their spiritual lives. He gave them a physical aspect, a physical imagery that they knew, that they understood 100% and completely, but he was not applying it to their gardening skills. He was not applying it to how that they tilled the land. He was talking to them about their spiritual need and their spiritual condition. So with that thought in mind tonight, we're going to look at the fallow heart. The fallow ground is just a fallow heart. And the fallow heart is, let's read verse number 12. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. That, that, that fallow ground is certainly a fallow heart of every man, woman, boy, or girl. Not only in the time, not only the time of here of Hosea, not only in the time of the minor prophets and King, and King Jeroboam II, but it, is, but it is a time of where we have fallow hearts in our society and in our lives today. And, and, it, and it, is, it is much more sadly rampant in our churches than we can ever imagine. Listen, because I don't know your heart and you do not know mine, but can I say this? God knows our heart. God knows our mind. God knows every single thing about us. God knows how many hairs we have on our head and how many hairs we don't have on our head. And I thank God for it, but can I tell you that the fallow heart here in the Word of God, the thoughts tonight is the fallow heart. The fallow heart is a, a unreceptive heart. The fellow heart is very unreceptive because when it goes from that divided heart and it becomes a fallow heart, that means it becomes singular focus and it is not, no longer focusing on 
God or the things of God or cares about God or the things of God. And we see that fallow heart, that hard heart, that callous heart, that indifferent heart. It's unresponsive to the Word of God tonight. That it's unresponsive. Kim, let me put it in, in this manner. That, they, that when we, uh, the Word of God is preached and the Word of God is, is go, goes out, whether uh, in live or whether uh, the way of social media or whether by the way of video or television or radio, when the Word of God, it goes out and it, and, and, and it finds a lodging place and it finds a ear. We can hear it, but a lot of people don't listen. Have you ever been accused when somebody says, are you listening to me? You, you, you hear them, but you're not listening. Well, can I say that we do that a lot to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We do that a lot to the Word of God. We do that a lot to the Holy Ghost. We hear Him, but we're not listening. That is the un, that, that, that is the un, <coughs> excuse me, that is unreceptive heart tonight is when we hear, but we don't listen. Also, not only when we hear, but we don't listen, but that, but that we look, but we don't see. See, we can look and see, we, we, we can see others' sin, but when we look in the mirror, we can't see our own sin. That's the unreceptive. We do not want to take responsibility for our own lives and our own actions and our own outcome. What is wrong with society today? Well, what's wrong with society today is because the people of God have failed the Lord. The people of God have got a fallow heart now in general, and we have failed God. Where, why, we, why is our society, why do we have a society today? Why do we have a people today that wants to look and point out others, other sins and others' problems, but they do not want to recognize their own? It's because we have failed and they have fallow hearts. They can see others' problems. They can see, they can see problems with other people. They can see problems in other homes. They can see problems in other churches. They can see problems on the front pew. They can see problems on the back pew the right pew and the left pew but can I say they can't see the problem where they sit tonight you know what that is they're unreceptive to the word of God speaking to them unreceptive to the Holy Ghost to show them their own sin and listen I'm thankful tonight that all that God's done and listen I was thinking about this and the, the thought come to me earlier, to, earlier today about Matthew chapter number 13 about the seed and the sower and I got to thinking about the unreceptive ground that got that, 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 the, that the sower found as he was going and he was going by there and it says that, that some of the seed in Matthew 13 and I just wrote these down that this is not uh, I am not quoting it uh, per scripture but I'm just giving you the highlights of, of some of these verses Matthew 13 it says that the seed fell on stony ground and it said that it sprang up immediately and it, it, and it was growing it said but it said, it said it had no root it had no depth it had no deepness you know what's wrong with most churches today they're not deep in the word of God. They, 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 they are still on the milk of the Word of God. We've got people that have been saved 40, 50, 60, 70 years, 10 years, 5 years that do not know anything more than as long as I'm saved and I'm not going to hell, then that should be all right with me. They don't know anything else about God and the Word of God and living for God and the Spirit of God. They're happy and content where they are. They're unreceptive to go and to hear about their own sin and their own problems of life and yet they find themselves they sprang up they have no root and they have no depthness and, and they have no uh, depth to them and guess what and when it says the sun come up and the sun come up and scorched them and it went away and why did it scorch them because the roots they had no depth they had no soil they had no deepness they had no depth to them and you know what that relates to you and I we have no maturity today in the house of God we have people that have been saved, as I said earlier, that I've been said saved, saved a long time, but they're still spiritually, they're still babes in Christ. We have no maturity. Why are there so many fallow hearts in the house of God? It's because we're, it's because our hearts are unproductive and we find ourselves being babes in Christ, having no depth, having no deepness in the word of God, having, not having, having a shallow walk with the Lord. 
We are unresponsive in those ways. And not only are they unresponsive because we have no maturity, but tonight we're there that the Tonight, the fallow heart is, is an unproductive heart. Not only is it an unreceptive heart, but it's an unproductive heart. And I got to look at and thinking about that unproductive heart. And once again, in Matthew chapter number 13, the seed and the sower, it says that the seed, uh, as the sower was, was sowing the seed, it says some of the seed fell by the wayside. And the fowls came and devoured it before it could take root. And listen, that's some of the unproductiveness of the church tonight. Some unproductive of us as individuals tonight. Listen, there's a church almost on every corner here in the Bible Belt. If you had a good arm, you could almost hit two or three churches with a rock tonight. Most anywhere you wanted to go in Paulding County, Cobb County, Douglas County, Fulton County, uh, anywhere that you wanted to go, you could almost hit a couple of churches if you had a good arm with a rock tonight. Listen, we've got more resources at our disposal we have more things that we have in our lives. we got more programs than we could ever imagine to have in the house of God. And yet why is the house of God, and yet why are we as individuals and God's people tonight, why are we have all these resources and all these programs, and there's a church on every corner, but how come we're so ineffective and we're not impactful tonight to a lost and dying world? It's because we have an unproductive fallow heart. We don't care what happens to that one across the street. And listen, that 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 transcends where that transcends generations where years ago people knew each other on their street. People knew each other, their neighbors and their neighbors' neighbors and the neighbors' neighbors and one over on the other street. They knew each individual. They cared for them. They looked after them. They made sure everything was all right. They were a family together in a community. And yet today we live in our houses. And yet today we can, we, we, we can say, they don't, we don't know who our neighbors are. Now, listen, we throw our hands up when they, when they drive by or when they're out mowing grass and we'll throw our hands up away. But we don't know our neighbors. We don't know who they are. We don't know their names. And then yet well, that becomes, that, that transcends from our home and our society into the church house is where we become unproductive as long as we're happy, as long as we're content, as long as things are going seemingly well, then, then we're just satisfied and we're happy. And as long as everything's going, we're not worried about it. Listen, as I said earlier, we've got so many programs and there's a lot of churches, smaller churches and even larger churches that have a lot of programs going on. Uh, in their church and in their community as an outreach, but we are, we are in generally ineffective and, and we do not have an impact like we used to do. Why? Because we have an unproductive fellow heart. Not only do we have an unproductive fellow heart, but listen, we have an, un, <coughs> we have an unresponsive heart. That fellow heart tonight is not only uh, unreceptive, unproductive, but it's unresponsive. It's an unresponsive heart tonight. And what I mean by that is, listen, you know, and we'll go back to Matthew 13 again. The seed and the sower is there sowing seed and he is sowing. It says that some fell among the thorns. And it didn't say, it didn't say that the seed sprang up. It didn't say that the seed sprang up or even took root. It says that the thorns sprang up and choked them out. Listen, we're, we're, we are unresponsive people when we don't respond and when God, we don't respond to the word of God and the moving of God in our lives. We find ourselves just idle. We find ourselves in a position where if God speaks to us and God says, stand up and testify and we push back the Holy Ghost of God and we tell him, no, I can't do that. Or he gets up and tells you to do something. He gets up and tells you, go to your neighbor or he wants you to, he wants you to get up out of your pew and do nothing and teach a Sunday school class or help, uh, help teenage girls or help middle school girls or elementary girls or boys or whatever it may be in a youth program and you sit there and say, no, I'm not going to do it. I don't need to do it. We find ourselves idle and when we find ourselves idle, we'll find ourselves in a position and in a place that we have an unresponsive heart, that there is no seed planted, there is nothing that takes root, that 
the, that, that, the, that the cares and the things of this world and what we have upon our lives overtakes us and overruns us and chokes out the Holy Spirit of God. We become unresponsive. Why is there such a fallowness in our hearts in the churches today? It's because there's a great falling away from the Lord. Why is there divided hearts? Why is, why is once the divided hearts now become fallow hearts in our society today? It's because, the, because of the progression that we find ourselves in, not leaning toward the Lord, not trusting in Him, not uh, seeking His face, not seeking wisdom, not seeking guidance, not, not, not caring about God or the things of God or God's house or God's people. Listen, when we find ourselves, we'll find ourselves that we become an unresponsive individual. When we don't, we don't turn to God and we don't ask God for, lead, for leadership and guidance, we find ourselves that we become totally ineffective for the house of God. You know what? You know why so many churches are ineffective? You know why they are ineffective for, for, uh, for the cause of Christ? You know why people aren't being saved? You know why people aren't being joined? Maybe not, not in a single, singular individual church, but how come people, listen, you can read uh, on the Southern Baptist websites and you can read their uh, periodicals and some of their chronicles and it's not just them but it, at least they're posting it they're talking about the great decline in baptism so if there's a great decline in baptism that means there's a great decline in salvation not only is there a great decline in baptism and salvation but there is an even a greater decline of people that are attending the house of God and why is that because we find ourselves being fallow hearts and we find ourselves totally being unproductive and not following the leadership of the Lord. Let me say this, when you, are, when you are unproductive and when you have your ground that just, that, that just lays there and, it, and has not been moved, has not been touched, and, and what happens is the weeds take over. The weeds take over. When the weeds take over, then you find yourself having a harvest that you never planted. Did you know that there's a great harvest for sin? And I got to thinking about this this afternoon and uh, reminds me of King David. He planted one lustful seed and yet he reaped a harvest for the rest of his life, a tearful, sorrowful harvest, a harvest of sin for the rest of his life. Why? Because he planted one seed. He planted one seed of sin, that seed of lust, and it cost him greatly the rest of his life. Yes, he still, the Bible says that God even said he's a man after God's own heart. If we're not careful, that man after God's own heart will become a fallow heart or become a divided heart. We have to be careful tonight to find ourselves that we'll be unproductive tonight. We'll find ourselves to be ineffective by the moving of God tonight. Listen, we'll find ourselves unresponsive to the will of God. We'll find ourselves unresponsive to the work of God. We'll find ourselves unresponsive to the word of God and we'll find ourselves unresponsive to the call of God in our lives. Well, I don't want to be called to preach. I don't want to be called to... Listen, he just may call you to go next door. He just may call, he just may call you to tell you to, that go next door, to go down to the schoolhouse, go somewhere to honor and stand for him. But yet we have an unproductive heart, an unresponsive heart and an unreceptive heart. Also, we have a fallow heart tonight is not only the, unre is the unreceptive, the unproductive, and the unresponsive, uh, but yet it's the unblameable heart. What do you mean by unblameable, Jeff? Well, can I tell you this? That whatever happens, it's not my fault. <laughs> it's got to be somebody else's fault. We want, to, we want to give blame to somebody else. When you and I don't have a tender heart, when you and I don't have a heart that's bent toward God and the things of God, when something goes wrong in our life or when there's problems in our life, or as I said earlier, we can see the problems in everybody else's life, but we can't see, the own, but we can't see our own problems in our own life, and I'm not to blame. The, the, what, I'm, what I'm experiencing today, what I'm going through today, all the troubles that I'm experiencing, it's certainly not my fault. 
It's certainly got to be somebody else's fault. Well, preacher, how come the church isn't full? How come people aren't getting saved? You know what, preacher? You must not be doing your job. You must not be right with God. Well, can I say this? It's not my job. All God has told me to do is I am to preach the unadulterated word of God and that is not my job to fill the pew. It is my job to give them the word of God. My friend, it's your job to go out and tell a lost and dying world to invite people to the house of God and to live your life and show them so they, somebody can't stand before God and say one day they'll stand before the judgment seat, they'll stand before the great white throne judgment and stand to God and say, God, it's not not my fault. You know what? It's their fault. There's enough preachers, there's enough things going on today that they know about the Word of God. Just like Adam was telling God, God gave, uh, God gave Eve to Adam, and Eve sinned, and Adam sinned, and God came walking in the cool of the day and Adam and Eve went and hid themselves and, and God knew exactly where they were but he called out because he wanted a response from Adam. See, when God speaks, God is not, is not looking for an unresponsive. He's looking for a response to his call. To the, to the, from, the, from the creation to the creator. And when he called, he said, Adam, wherefore art thou? And Adam said, <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. Adam said, well... <laughs> Uh, uh, me and Eve were naked and we went and hid ourselves and well who told you you were naked well God knew what happened in their lives but yet he was wanting Adam to fess up and to confess his sin but you know what Adam did Adam said God that woman that you gave me she sinned and I sinned too well, whose fault is it? Did, whose fault, Adam, that, that you sinned? Well, Eve twisted my arm. <laughs> Eve told me if I didn't eat this apple, she was going to break my arm, so I think I had to eat it. No, it's Adam's fault. Problem is, we become a, we become a, we become a people from the beginning that we are unblameable for our actions. It's got to be somebody else's fault. Somebody else has to blame. Somebody else uh, thinks of the problem and knows all that, uh, know this there. Listen, we are too keenly aware of everybody else's problems. We're too keenly aware of what goes on in somebody else's house. We're too keenly aware about the way of gossip what is happening in the church house. We're too keenly aware of what's happening in somebody else's house and somebody else's life and yet we cannot see the sin. We cannot see our own lives for looking for somebody else's life. And yet, Matthew chapter number 13, verse number 5 says, People's hearts have waxed gross. Now, then it says, and I'm paraphrasing, I just wrote the highlights down of this verse. It says, people's hearts have waxed gross. It says, their ears are dull. Their eyes are closed. You know what that means? It just means this. They're keenly aware of everybody else's sin. They're keenly aware of everybody else's problems. And yet they're blind to their own eyes. They're blind to their own problems. Blind to their own sin. And you know what that is? That is a fallow heart. That is a, that is a part of unblameable. They are not to blame. Well, my friend, you know what? It never changes. If you do not Take responsibility for your own life. You don't take responsibility for your own actions. You don't take responsibility for your own thoughts. You don't take responsibility for your own doings, my friend. Then you can go in and out of God's house and you'll never change until you, be, until you have that fallow heart removed that is, not, that, that, that is not somebody else's fault. It's your own. You are to blame. You know, who, you know who's to blame? For the sin in Jeff Childers' life, boy, I'd love to blame it on y'all. <laughs> boy, I'd love to blame it on, I'd love to blame it on my sisters. See, my sisters blamed me for a lot of stuff, which mostly was true. But you know who I can only blame for, for the sin in my life and the things that, that go wrong in my life and for the things that I don't do for God and the, the things I don't care for God and the things of God? Me. It's the only person I can blame. 
only person that I can look to to correct it. Because it says that, that, that we should break up your fallow ground. That we need to break up our own fallow ground tonight. Only you can make a decision to turn your life back over to God. Only you can make a decision to turn your life over to God and turn your back on the world and turn your back on sin and ask God to save you. Only you can make that decision. Then God will respond and act upon that decision you make. You want your ground, you want your fallow ground broken up? God will, God will, as I said, God will provide the plow, and then God will provide the seed, and then God will provide the water, and then God will provide the fertilizer, and then God will provide the harvest. Why? All he's asking you to do is you have a desire to break up that fallow ground. But not only is our, is our fallow heart is an unmovable heart, I'm sorry, an unblameable heart, but it's an unmovable heart hard as well right quickly it's un, it's an unmovable heart tonight and what i mean by that well as i said there's people that come in and out of god's houses not only here at cock and ridge but everywhere the word of god is preached they'll come in and out they may be long time church members and i do, and i'm not questioning their salvation that's between them and god the only person i know that saved without a shadow of a doubt is jeff childers i don't know about my wife i don't know about my children i don't know about anybody else but i know about jeff Childers. But can I say this, that we have an unmovable heart tonight, and, we're, and that unmovable heart is rarely ever touched by the message from God. When you have people that come in out of God's house, they sit in their pew and they sit in their place and they sit in there like a stump on a log and they sit in there with their arms crossed and sometimes it looks like mentally or spiritually they're saying, I'm here, now bless me. And they come in out of God's house. They get up, they sit down through the song service. They're emotionalist. Through the song service, they're not moving. They just sit there with that blank stare on their face. And after the message is being preached, they sit there with a blank stare on their face. Or if they go to sleep, Lord willing, hopefully somebody will give them an elbow and wake them up and at least let them hear a portion of, of the message God wants them to hear. Then they get up from their place and they leave and they go and they find themselves being unmoved by the Holy Ghost of God. They're rarely, rarely ever touched by the message of God. You know why? Because they have in their mind this fallow heartness, this fallow, and we'll be looking at this in a moment, this fallow thinking in their lives. They have this, and everything's fine. Oh, my friend, everything's not fine. I don't care if you are the best, if you're, if you are, if you think who you are, if you are, I mean, let me get this right, my mind's reeling here. If you are who you think you are, if you are the best thing since sliced bread to God and to the church, you still got room to grow. You still got sin in your life. No one's perfect, and there's a fallowness that comes by because we think everything is fine. Those individuals that think their life is fine and the only time they've ever been to the altar, listen, I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm just trying to get us to realize that if we're not careful, we will have a divided heart. And if we're not careful, that divided heart will quickly progress into a fallow heart. And a fallow heart is hard and callous and untillable and un un unresponsive, and it's, and, and it's and, and it has no use in its current condition until God says, break up your fallow ground. Sometimes I worry about people, the only time they've ever been to the altars, the day they got saved. They could be up in their 50s, up in their 60s, up in their 70s. They say, well, I got saved when I was 10 years old and they've been saved 40, 50, 60 years and the last time they ever went to the altar of God, every time they went down to have a little talk with Jesus, every time they went down to get things right, every time they went down to ask God to forgive them of their sin, every time they went to ask God to cleanse them and to help them or to do something in their life was when they were 10 years old. Listen, I would be very concerned and worried about where you're going to spend eternity if you're not truly saved. Oh, why? Because sometimes they're, they're, um, there's an unmovable heart is a sign of a fallow heart. Let me read you Revelation chapter number 3, verse number 15. I know thy works. This is God speaking. I know thy works. Thou art neither cold nor hot. 
I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm. And neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Listen, we think everything's fine, and it's not. God says you've been playing church too long. You think you're hot, but you're cold. And I, and, I, and I wish, he said, I wish you'd realize you'd be either one or you'd be for the world or you'd be for the word. But quit trying to be both because you can't be both because you're lukewarm. You have that divided heart and now it's, now it's ramped up into a fallow heart and things aren't right. I wish you were one or the other because I could speak to you about your lostness. I could tell you that you're lost. And if, if, you were, if you were hot, you could tell others about it. And I could speak to you in a manner that you want to draw closer unto me. But yet you're lukewarm and you think everything's fine. Mo, my friend, listen. They're blind and the fruitlessness in their lives is apparent. The barrenness in their lives is apparent. And guess what? It displeases God. God said, I wish you was either hot or cold. But because you're lukewarm and you're neither hot or cold, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. God's displeased with those that are unmovable, have an unmovable, uh, have an unmovable fallow heart tonight. You know what a fallow heart is too? Fallow heart is a critical heart. Some people have such a critical heart. Some people have such criticalness in their lives and, and they are so critical about others and they're critical about the church and they're critical about this and they're critical about and they're critical all kind of ways. Let me, let, me, let me read you this. Matthew chapter number seven. He says, Why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye? Why be, let me read that again so you can get the text of this. Matthew chapter number 7, Jesus is speaking here. It says, Why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? See, the sin of the critic mostly is greater than the sin of the person he's being criticized. The sin, or unless not the sin, but the heart of the critic also has a grossly distorted vision tonight. They have a grossly distorted vision. Uh, that, 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 that critical heart, it looks at sin and looks at, even sometimes looks at their own sin, but it still imagines it sees righteousness in itself. And what I mean by that is they say, yeah, I've got sin, but look at all this that I, look at all this that's greater. I may have a few little sins, but look at all this I do for God. It's not what we do for God, it's what God's already done for us. The critical heart tonight looks and they look around and they say, well, look, look what all I do for God. And they don't do nothing for God. Certainly God looks at me and, 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 and shines upon me and likes me better than he likes them. Certainly God, look, look at their lives, look at their sin. Listen, my sin's nowhere close to what, they, what their sin is because I know what their sin is. The critical heart tonight is a truly fallow heart. And you know where the downfall of a lot of people is that critical heart, that critical, fa uh, that, that critical fallow, uh, the, the fallowness in their heart, that criticalness has run off and destroyed a lot of people because the criticalness they have in their own life. And listen, tonight, I'm not being ugly, but if you see yourself and God spoke to you about you have a critical heart, you can get that right tonight. You don't have to worry about waiting until the church, wait until the church doors open so you may come in. You can fall upon your knees right there and ask God to help you, ask God to forgive you, ask God to cleanse you tonight of that criticalness in your life because it's destroying not only your life and your family's life, but your witness and your testimony and lives of others because you're critical about other things that, uh, that you have no control over. We're critical about how we live or we're critical about the way someone dresses or we're critical about what they drive or we're critical about this or critical about that. Listen, we, uh, God has asked us not to be critical and that's that grossly distorted vision 
that we see everything, we see everybody else's, but when we look at our own sin, we, we, we look at more, we, we say, well, we're still pretty righteous. We still have some righteousness. We're, my, I have more righteousness in my life than I do sin. That's critical. That's a criticalness heart. That is a critical heart and a fallow heart tonight. One more tonight, and I want to look at this. We have a fallow heart is not only, and I'm, let me give you these tonight in order that, I, that God gave them to me. A fallow heart is an unreceptive heart. A fallow heart is an unproductive heart. A fallow heart is an unresponsive heart. A fallow heart is an unblameable heart. A fallow heart is an unmovable heart. A fallow heart is a critical heart. And the last one I got tonight is a fallow heart is an incorrect thinking heart. What do you mean by incorrect thinking? Well, let me put it to you this way. Not too many times, but there's been times down through the years in my ministry that I have heard something of this nature. <laughs> well, the talk that goes on in the church house. Now, when somebody talks about God's message and God's word as a talk, there, is a, there, there lies a problem within itself. But the talk that goes on down at God's, uh, that goes on down uh, at, uh, at the church house, you know what? It's getting old. It's getting old about the, this true worship. It's getting old about somebody talking about true worship. Man, I'm here. <laughs> should, that should be enough. You shouldn't worry. We shouldn't worry about what people do outside these church doors. We shouldn't worry about their, we shouldn't worry about how they walk with God and how they live out in the lost world. As long as they're in the church house, listen, some people think as long as I'm putting money in the plate, I should be able to have, a, I should be able to have something to say about what goes on down at the church house. Can I say, if you feel that way, keep your money. Just keep your money. God don't need your money. But that sometimes, that, that incorrect thinking heart, they think about it in a manner, well, about this true worship. Well, I'm here. That's really, you know, that's, that's, that, that should be enough. Not only that uh, incorrect thing about the worship, but also about true revival. You know why that we? You know why we don't have a lot of five-day revivals anymore. You know why churches have gone to modified revivals, three-day revivals, two-day revivals, one-day revivals, a day of revival, whatever it may be. It's because the people have incorrect thinking about what true revival truly is. It's not a series of meetings. It's not a series of times. It's about our heart and our walk and our fallowness in our heart with God. That's about revival. And some people say, well, I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied with the church. I'm satisfied with the way it is. I'm satisfied with my life. I'm satisfied with how I live my life. Therein lies the problem. You're satisfied tonight about how you live in your life. We should have, we should never be satisfied with the life that we're living down here upon this earth because there's always room for improvement. There's always room to ask God to forgive us. There's always room to get closer to God and have a closer walk with God and spend more time with God and be right with God. There's more room tonight. That's some incorrect thinking. That is a fallow heart tonight. But not only that, that about incorrect thinking, about worship and about revival, but there's a lot of incorrect thinking about spiritual growth. This is, this is, this is most people's attitude about spiritual growth. I'm saved. I'm heaven bound. I'm not going to hell. What else is there? Oh, my friend, if you got that attitude, if you've ever thought that, you've got some foulness in your heart. You've got you to gotta, you gotta break up. You gotta ask God to sink his plow deep and get them times sunk deep into your life and plow your life. Why? Because oh, there's there's more to being a child of God. Listen, than just being saved, than just going to heaven, than just missing hell. It's about the, the complete experience that you and I have as a child of God walking hand in hand with our Lord and Savior. Not only that, but right quick, there's a lot of people that have a hard time about why preachers and about why we're always talking about that we need to be faithful. 
We need to be faithful to God. We need to be faithful to God's house. We need to be faithful to others. Listen, some people say that's foolishness. We don't need to go to church every Sunday. Listen, God, God knows how busy I am. God knows what I got on my plate. And this is the best. This one that this one always gets me. It always sends a twinge that I could buy a 16 penny nail in half when someone says, me and God, we've, we've got this thing worked out. Well, no, there's no working it out with God. Either you follow God's precepts, you follow God's guidance, you follow God's words, or you ain't got nothing worked out. You're fooling yourselves. Listen, and probably one of the other ones that I like is, Preacher, when I have time, I go almost all the time. Preacher, you know I'm busy. You know I, I got all this and God knows about it. But you know when I'm not busy and I don't have anything else to do and, 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 when, and, and, and when I'm not that busy, I, I, I go to church almost all the time. Well, that's fallowness. You may not recognize it. You may not know it, but I'm telling you by the word of God tonight, God's trying to show you the foulness that's in all of our hearts that we have got to deal with. We have got to address it. We've got to ask God to forgive us. We've got to ask God to help us and then repent from that foulness and ask God to plow deep in our lives so our heart can be useful and the ground can be useful once again. Listen, we need to break up the foulness in our hearts our fallow hearts are far, not near to the Lord. Because we said this morning, the Lord said, they draw near to me with their mouth or their lips, yet they're far from me with their hearts. Fallowness never draws close to God. Fallowness always turns and runs from God and distance themselves from the Lord. I'm going to end with this tonight. Ezekiel chapter number 36. Ezekiel chapter number 36, verse number 26. The Holy Word of God says, this, the Lord speaking, He says, A new heart also will I give you. Now think about this. This is God speaking. Look at the promises of God that's in this scripture. Look at the promises that God has promised those that have a desire to break up their fallow ground. What God's going to do if you've got a desire and you ask God to forgive you and you start breaking up that hardness, you start breaking up that indifference, you start breaking up that callousness, God said, ah, God said, a new heart also will I give you. Oh, we no longer have a fallow heart. God said he's going to give us a new heart. We're not going to have an unreceptive, unproductive, unresponsive, unblameable, unmovable, clinical, incorrect thinking heart. God said, I'm going to remove that heart and give you a new heart. Also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put in you. And I will take away the stony heart, that fallow heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh a tender heart a heart that's open to God and to the things of God and closed off to the world listen look at what the Lord has promised if you and I just have a desire to break up that fallow ground that old hard heart God said he's going to replace it. He's going to give us a new heart and a new spirit. And he's going to take away the oldness. He's going to take away the dullness and the staleness and the stagnation of our walk and our life with him. He's going to remove it and he's going to replace it with a brand new heart of flesh. You know what that means? Have you ever heard somebody say that when they've had open heart surgery or I've even to spoken to some people that have had heart replacements and they said I've got a new lease on life God's telling you he's going to give you a, not, not just a new lease he's going to give you a brand new life do you have a desire tonight to break up that fallow ground my prayer is that God has spoken to you tonight God spoke to you this morning. I'm thankful for the word of God. Listen, I've got some more thoughts. I don't know, next Sunday morning, we may be find ourselves back in Hosea chapter number, chapter number 10. 
Verse number 12. Let's have to follow the leadership of the Lord. But tonight, I'm focused on the fallow heart. And listen, we just, I just scratched the surface of things that God just right gave me quickly when I was studying this about the fallowness in each of our hearts. Listen, don't sit there and say, well, you know what? I certainly wish somebody, I, I wish so-and-so was listening to this because they need this. My friend, you need it. I need it from the Word of God. This is not a message from Jeff Childers or the thoughts of my infinite of my little brain but it's from the infinite wisdom and divine guidance of God tonight that God's wanting to speak to you why did why did I not have another scripture because God knew who was going to be listening tonight and God wanted you to hear this message because this message is not for somebody else this message is for you what are you going to do with the message God has given you tonight about your fallow heart. God wants, you to, God wants you to have a desire to break up your fallow ground. He didn't say he was going to do it. Hosea didn't say he was going to do it. God instructed you and I that we have to have a desire for us to break up our own fallow ground. And then God will provide all the tools and everything needed for us to be useful and us to reap a harvest of great joy and peace in life. May God bless you tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. May Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you, Father. We ask you, Lord, to do that that's needful. God, I ask you, Father, Lord, you give a great desire, Father, to your children to break up their fallow ground, to break up their fallowness in their heart. Lord, because a fallow heart is a heart that is, that, that, that is turned away from you. God, that's trying to distance their self from you. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that, Lord, you will, you will have and give us a desire to break up that fallow ground. And God, will ask you, Father, to help us. And, Lord, you will provide the tool and you will, you will, you will till our ground and forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God, you will use this time, Father, for your honor and your glory. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that each heart, each man, woman, boy, or girl, God, Lord, will take this Father, and it'll find a place in their heart and in their lives. And God, it's for your honor and your glory. God, thank you tonight for your blessed word. Father, thank you for those that, are, that, that, are, that have been watching. Father, by the way, of Facebook Live and YouTube. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those that are going to be watching later and picking it up. God, I pray that you would not let the temptation to turn away and to turn it off or go to somewhere else. But God, lock in, Father on their lives lock in on my life God as you have about this God help us Lord in the fallowness of our lives and, our, and of our fallow heart God remove that stony heart God give us a heart of flesh God thank you for giving us a brand new life in a brand new way in a brand new desire Lord, in thy name we certainly pray have your goodness and greatness tonight in our lives. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for forgiveness. Father, thank you for supplying the plow that changes our lives, our hearts and our attitudes, and our walk with thee. In thy sweet name we pray. Amen.